Uh, so what is Sphinx? Sphinx is a tool that lets you create documentation for Python projects. I don't think it's Python exclusive, but it is a, it is a Python um, project itself. If you've ever read any documentation on a Python project, you've seen Sphinx. If you ever went to the state of lib docs, it's written in Sphinx. Um, just about every project I ever use has a lookup with Sphinx docs and read the docs.org integration. So um, it's a nice little project. There's a link to it. Uh, I'll give you a link to these presentations that do that. So setting up the Sphinx project. Sphinx is just, um, like I mentioned, just a Python project like anything else. So you just pip install it. You know, um, I always make a virtual, and that's just, just how I could. I'd recommend it. <laughs> uh, make a virtual and then just install Sphinx. The latest version is 1.1.3. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all the dependencies it needs. It's going to install stuff like pigments and a few things, but that's all in the setup.py, so you don't have to worry about installing those separately. Um, so once it's, um, once it's there, you run a command called Sphinx Quick Start. So Sphinx Quick Start. So what this is, is think of it like you use Django, it's like the start project, the start app command. It's basically creating your, your structure for you, your skeleton project. So what you do is you just go into your project root and you run that command. And what that's going to do is, it's going to ask you a bunch of questions, right? It's going to ask you about how you want your doc structured, certain files are named. Really, all the defaults are reasonable. I stick with all the defaults mostly. There's one um, auto doc. So if you're actually documenting code, um, Autodoc is a good extension for, um, it'll actually look at your modules and create documentation off your doc strings. So it's kind of a nice way to do documentation with Autodoc. You don't have to write it yourself. So restructured text. Um, so restructured text is what Sphinx uses to create your docs. Um, we were just kind of talking earlier. I don't think anybody really knows restructured text. <laughs> I think they mainly just look at other projects to see other people are using it. It's kind of a weird little syntax, but it's quick to write, I think. If you're doing really basic stuff, it is pretty simple. It gets weird when you start linking a bunch of files together and things. It gets kind of strange. Um, but I, for a lightning talk, I can't teach you RST, so <laughs> um, the link to an example there. So structuring your docs. So the, the root of your doc is going to be an index.rst file. That's what you've selected in your, um, in your default from the Sphinx Quick Start. So basically what that does is you're going to have in it is where you're basically defining your table of contents. So that's going to be your root document. You're going to define your structure of your documentation. And from there, create other RST files that are your actual documentation. So this is an example. I don't know how you pronounce it. A top tree, table contents tree. Um, so basically, this is usually what ends up mainly in your index RST file as your top tree. So, uh, so this is actually RST syntax here. I think max depth, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody is just it'll pull up as many titles as you have into the is into the table of contents and the depth that you have. So if max depth is one, it's only going to pull up the first title. If you do two, it'll do titles and subtitles. So it creates this kind of structure in your in your document. Um, this right here, intro, tutorials, example, first example, those would be other RST files. So intro would be right in the root, wherever your comp.py is, wherever your index.rst file is. Um, you just leave the .rst extension off of it. Um, so example slash first example would be just a folder examples inside of it, the first example .rst file. So building your docs. So once you have them all written, um, Sphinx, you run a command to actually build them. Now, typical output is HTML, and that's what read the docs is going to want. I'll we'll show you that later. But um, you can do EPUB, PDF, LaTeX. Um, this, this presentation itself right now that you're looking at is a Sphinx project. So I've got an extension installed to output it into HTML5 slides. So it's actually a really quick, easy way to source control the presentation. So this command here, Sphinx build b. So that's your build type, the dash p, so HTML, EPUB, PDF, um, the source directory, and the build directory. So where's my source and where do I want to output my docs to? Um, if you use Sphinx Quick Start, it's going to create a shortcut for almost, I think, all of the, the built-in stuff. So it just becomes make HTML. And that's going to use your, all your defaults you set up with Sphinx Quick Start. I think it's like make slides for this one. So then once you have your docs made, because what it said is it's just making HTML files where you have to host them somewhere. Um, 
a lot of people now are using what's called readthedocs.org. So Read the Docs was created at Django Dash in 2010 by Air Culture, Charles Lieber, and Bobby Grace. Um, did they win that? Do we know if they won with Read the Docs that year? No? I have any idea. But it was, it was created, the, the Django Dash. Uh, so basically, you know, you write your docs, you can host them for free on readthedocs.org, and it's, it's really awesome service. It really is. Um, so the readthedocs.org integration is simple. So you just got to put your project out somewhere where they can access it. So um, GitHub's default, they support Bitbucket, but really, if you can provide a link to your code, and they can pull it down. I think it's, uh, it's Mercurial, Git, SVN, Bazaar, I think is what they support. I can't remember. Um, that's it. So just put your code somewhere, sign up, read the docs. Then it's just a matter of setting up your project, giving them the link to it, um, and basically clicking build. So this is just kind of importing your project. Um, so once you have the read the docs account set up, you just go to your dashboard, take a picture here, you click the import button. Um, you fill out the input form, it's really not, you just do basically your name of your project, you know, where do you want, you know, where's your source code at. Uh, what branch do you want to pull from? Is it default master or trunk? Do you have it pulling out of a branch? Um, you can provide a requirements.txt file and it create a virtual environment. So if you have things you want to install with your Spring product, extensions, those sort of things, you can provide that in the input form. Um, so once that's done, you just get create and it's going to go through a building process. Um, once the build is done, um, I think I've only had one build break. And it was my first import of the project. I think I just deleted the project and put it back in, and it worked fine. Um, so usually, I mean, I've never had issues with the build. <coughs> so once that's done, you'll get a link, and then that's your docs. That should probably pull up read the docs and work with it. Um, so yeah, so this is read the docs. Here's um, still on here for my Python notes. So. I mean, you've probably all seen some of those like this, right? So this is docs created from Sphinx. Uh, so this right here is it's right, the, like, like the table of contents tree. So this is a max step too. So it's pulling in my first headline, my big headline, and then all the subheadings, because I've told it to go two down. So once you have that up, um, it's really easy to do GitHub integration. And they have integration for Bitbucket too. Um, and there's examples on their, on their documentation, read the docs on how to set up Bitbucket, but I just said GitHub here. Um, so really, once you have your buddy, you go to the admin page, you go to the service folks within GitHub. Um, there's available services, you go down, you click read the docs, and then up on the top right, it's gonna where you check a box called active, and then update settings. Once that's submitted, that's all you have to do. Now any push to master or whatever branch you set up as your documentation branch will automatically get pushed to read the docs and get built. So uh, when I first did this, I did it as a live <coughs> for Python, just kind of to try it out. And it was great because I mean each, I would just go to each session, write my docs, commit it and push, and then my docs were uploaded to the docs or my, my notes were. So that's it. And they gotta have a meme slides, right? So there's my standard meme. Um, the actual the code for this is up in my GitHub profile. I'll put um, instructions on how to build this. If you want to just pull these down and have these slides for whatever reason if you want to, but um, you basically you just you know run my requirements.txt file and then run make slides. That's all I need to do. Um, 